Hi. Here we have uh, Shabnam is considering three alternatives to invest her surplus cash for a week. Uh, she wishes to guarantee maximum returns on her investment. A very very important uh, word here is guarantee. She wants to guarantee maximum returns. Right. Let's see how does this word make a difference. We'll come back to it. Now she has three options, each of which can be utilized fully or partially in conjunction with the others. Okay, so these three uh, investment options can be used in uh, some combination. Option A is invest in a public sector bank. It promises a return of 0.1%. So this is a fixed return of 0.1%. Whatever, ha ha whatever happens, a market goes up or down, you will definitely get a, re get a return of 0.1% here. Option B is invest in mutual funds of ABC Limited. Okay, a rise in the market will return give you a return of plus five percent in this option, whereas a fall will give you a return of minus three percent. So here, the returns are subjected to markets. If market increases, you'll have a plus five percent return. If market decreases, you'll have a minus three percent return. Similarly, in option C. Uh, Again, a mutual fund CBA limited here, if the stock prices rise, you will get a return of minus 2.5% and if the stock prices fall, you'll get a return of plus 2%. Fine. Now see, when you say guarantee maximum returns, now if you invest only in A, you'll get a meager return of 0.1%. Is this the maximum return you can get? Well. If you invest in option B and the market rises, you will get a positive 5% return. But is it a guarantee of positive 5% return? No, because you don't know whether market will rise or not. If market falls, you will get a return of minus 3%. So again, that's a loss. So 0.1% now seems better than a minus 3% return, right? But again, we don't know whether markets will rise or not. Same the uncertainty is with option C also. So option B and option C are uncertain returns but the thing to notice here is if markets rise B seems to be a good option C seems to be a bad option but if market falls B will give you a negative return but C will give you a positive return so is there some combination of B and C along with let's say A such that you can get a guaranteed return of more than 0.1%. If you invest only in A, you will definitely get a return of 0.1%. But if you make do some combination of B and C because they are acting opposite to each other when markets rise or fall. So maybe there is some combination of B and C which will give you a return of more than 0.1%. Right? So let's look at just B and C. Maybe there is some combination of B and C which will give you a better return. And just to be sure, let's consider A as well. So let's say she invests X rupees in A, Y rupees in B and uh, or let's say A, B, C. A rupees in A, B rupees in B and C rupees in C. Okay. Now if markets rise, if markets rise, what will her return be? She will get 0.1% of A, so 0.1% of A plus 5% of B plus 5% of B and minus 2.5% of C, minus 2.5% of C. This will be her return when markets rise. But if markets fall, what will her return be? Her return for A will be 0.1% only, so 0.1% of A. But if markets fall, she'll get a minus 3% return from B. So minus 3% of B. And if markets fall, she will get 2% return from C. So plus 2% of C. So these are the two possible returns that she has. But since she has to guarantee a maximum return, her overall return should be the maximum of these two functions. Right? She wants to guarantee maximum return. So what's happening is for different values of A, B and C, if markets rise, this will be a graph like this, maybe 
some graph like this this would be a graph like this maybe right for different values of a b and c although we have three variables here a b and c but let's just consider from a 2d perspective let's say for certain values of a b and c uh, one of these returns will be this and one of these returns will be here now what's happening is if let's say this is the return for market uh, increasing so if markets increase this will be the return but if market decrease this will be the return so here there is no guarantee of a positive uh, return it can be a negative return as well let's say this is the if for certain values of abc this is the point now if markets increase there will be a negative return if markets decrease there will be a positive return so again here there is no guarantee that you'll get positive returns so when will you have a guarantee that this is the return that i will get uh, the guarantee will be when both these graphs intersect right so if both these graphs intersect for some values of a b and c whether markets rise or fall you will get this exact return isn't it for any other value for any other value even if let's say x is here here you'll get positive returns here you'll get negative returns so there's no guarantee of a positive return correct so the positive return is maximized when the two graphs intersect when the two graphs are equal right so what we just need to do is we need to equate both these returns so we have 0.1 percent of a plus 5 percent of b minus 2.5 percent of c is equal to 0.1 percent of a minus 3 percent of b plus 2 percent of c so 0.1 percent of a is equal both the sides it gets cancelled out 3 minus 3 percent becomes plus 8 percent of b and minus 2.5 goes here becomes plus uh, what do you say plus uh, 4.5 percent of c right so percent is by 100 which gets cancelled out here so we have 8b is equal to 4.5 c so b by c comes out to be 4.5 upon 8 which is effectively 45 upon 80 and this goes by 5 9 times this goes by 5 16 times so the ratio of investment of b and c should be 9 is to 16 this is what we have fine now that we know that b the investment in these two schemes b and c should be in the ratio of 9 is to 16 this was a rupees b rupees and c rupees now let's figure out what should a be let's just focus on b and c first of all if b is 9 rupees and c is 16 rupees let's see what is the return from these two considering that uh, for the timing we are not investing in a we are only investing in b and c so if we invest 9 rupees in uh, if b is equal to 9 rupees and c is equal to 16 rupees in that case what happens if is the market's rise the return is going to be 5% of 9, 5% of 9 plus uh, 2, sorry, minus 2.5% of 16, right? So 5% of 9 is 5 into 9 by 100 minus 2.5 into 16 by 100. So this is 45 by 100 minus uh, 32 uh, 36 by 100 sorry this will be 40 2.5 into 16 is 40 so this comes out to be 5 by 100 which is effectively uh, what do you say the point zero five. okay so on a total of 25 rupees you will get a return of 5 paise, point zero five rupees right so what is the percentage return that you get from here the percentage return that you get from here is uh, 0 0.05 on a base of 25 rupees into 100 percent so this is 5 by 25 which is 1 upon 5 which is 0 0.2 percent so if you invest in only b and c in this ratio of 9 is to 16 you will get a return of 0.2 percent see i calculated the return when markets rise when markets fall 
then also the return will be five paise only. That's what we calculated this ratio to be, right? If markets fall, you'll get a return of minus three percent here. So minus three percent of nine rupees and plus two percent of sixteen rupees. So minus twenty-seven plus thirty-two is five by hundred. See, same return. For same return only, we got this ratio, right? That's why. So in any case, markets rise or fall, you'll get a return of 0.2 percent with this ratio when you invest in only B and C. Now, if you let's say out of this 25 rupees, if you invest something in A as well, which gives a return of 0.1 percent, will your overall returns increase or decrease? Obviously, they will decrease because here itself you are getting a return of 0.2 percent. So why would you want to take out money from here and invest in a fund which is giving you less than 0.2 percent return, right? You would not. Hence, you would not invest in A at all. So this should be zero. Okay. So the maximum return that can be guaranteed is 0.2 percent. Now this is one of the toughest questions ever asked in CAT, just because, not because of the calculations involved, but because of the logic that you need to apply in it. So the maximum first question, the maximum guaranteed return to Shabnam is option C, 0.2 percent. And what strategy will maximize the guaranteed return to Shabnam? The strategy is not to invest in A and invest in B and C in the ratio of nine is to sixteen. So the percentage investment in B should be nine parts out of total twenty-five. So nine by twenty-five into hundred percent. This is thirty-six percent. So investment in B should be thirty-six percent. Investment in C should be sixty-four percent. Hundred minus thirty-six is sixty-four. And investment in A should be zero percent. This should be the strategy, which is option B. Option B is the correct answer here. Thank you.